been a busy day for volunteers, advocates, and supporters of the United Way of Western Nebraska as their fourth annual Radiothon was held today at Main Street Market. KDB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in Western Nebraska and Eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, $18,500. That was the target fundraising goal for the Radiothon today at Main Street Market in Scottsbluff. At the start of the day, the United Way was at 94% of meeting their 2019-2020 campaign fundraising goal of $308,000. Starting at 7 a.m. and continuing until 6 p.m., volunteers manned the phone lines while KNEB hosted live coverage of the Radiothon, encouraging locals to call in and make a donation. And as an added bonus, local businesses stepped in with added incentives throughout the day to encourage people to pledge money to the campaign. United Way Executive Director Steph Black says they've added a new way for folks to donate this year. We're really focusing on a new level this year and it's called the Community Partner Level. And that's a, a, a recurring donation you can do either on debit or credit card. And it's at a $12.50 level per month. And that allows you to be the community partner. There's lots of giveaways for anybody giving at that level today. And if you were unable to donate during today's Radiothon but would still like to donate, you can go to unitedwayofwesternebraska.com and make a monetary donation. Well, Scottsdale Farrell Fire is seeking more new members for the department after a group of firefighters had a mass resignation last week. Six members handed in their resignation letters last Tuesday, with many feeling that former Chief Rusty Shop was unfairly ousted earlier in the month and that they had full faith in the old leadership and were uncomfortable with Paul Rising as their new chief. Now, Rising could not discuss the personnel matter, but says despite the mass departure, which can happen from time to time in volunteer organizations, the department will be able to handle their share of calls. Yes, Scott Bluff Rural right now is at a lull in, in numbers, but at the same time, we still have enough numbers to make an initial response, and we do have mutual aid agreements with all the fire districts in the uh, county. Rysick says the department is about at the strength it was when it was first formed and has picked up a few new members over the past week, but would like to have membership levels at or above 20. Anybody interested in becoming a volunteer with the Scotts Bluff Rural Fire Department can find out more by calling 635-1654. Well, coming up after the break, Bill Boyer will be in with your Thursday evening forecast. I love that right after this on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we believe it shouldn't cost you money to access your money. That's why we offer free ATMs anytime, anywhere. Whether you are across town or traveling abroad, there won't be an added expense to access the funds in your Platte Valley Bank account. Free ATMs are just one of the great benefits of banking with us. Stop by to talk to one of our friendly associates to discuss what else Platte Valley Bank has to offer. At TCN Moore in Scotts Bluff, we have toys and puzzles for your children, or they make a great gift. TCN Moore has craft activities, pretend play toys, and dozens of puzzles and games for all ages. We also have the largest supply of Melissa and Doug toys, and we still carry all of your classroom essentials. Remember to like TCN Moore on Facebook. TCN Moore, 1621 Broadway, beautiful downtown Scotts Bluff. When you're Arby's, you can do certain things, like load roast beef and curly fries onto a sandwich, add horsey sauce, Arby's sauce, and cheddar cheese sauce on there. Sell them two for six bucks. And when you're Arby's, you can call it the Arbinator. Because if you aren't, Arbinator... 
is a super strange name to just invent. Arby's, we have the meat. This is KNEV.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meat. Going to be dealing with some breezy conditions. Windy, downright windy to start the evening. Temperatures falling down into the low 30s and then down into the 20s overnight. Thankfully, winds will subside a bit overnight. They're going to come back tomorrow, though, unfortunately. For really the next couple of days through Saturday, we're going to remain quite windy. So another windy day tomorrow and then on into Saturday. Now, Sunday doesn't look as windy, but it's really a transition day. Saturday and Sunday, very mild conditions before Sunday night into Monday. It's sharply colder around here. Huge temperature drops coming and we're on in the market for some accumulating snow. Yesterday we hit 40 after a morning low of 20, so we doubled up our, our low temperature. Seven hundredths of an inch of moisture in the rain gauge yesterday uh, from that rain and snow. Had a little bit more today as well, but that's pushed us up to eight hundredths. Uh, we got off the uh, one one hundredth uh, schneid there for a little bit, still well below normal uh, for the month and year. Thirty five in Denver right now. It's forty one North Platte McCook at forty three. Those uh, mildest temps right here in the central portions of Nebraska and northern portions of Kansas. We have 30s here in our region. Mullen and Valentine both at 38. Ogallala here at 39. Oshkosh also at 38 right now. 30 in Lusk and 29 in Cheyenne, which in itself wouldn't be too bad, but look at these winds still howling out here. The calmest winds are in the Sand Hills. We've got winds still at near 30 miles an hour in Lusk. These are sustained winds. Northwest at 23 in Torrington, 24 right now. Uh, mile an hour winds in Wheatland, 22, Scotts Bluff and Kimball. And that's dropping those wind chills down into the mid, low to mid 20s. 15 in Cheyenne and in Lusk right now for those wind chills. So it is very cold thanks to those cold northwesterly winds out there. Otherwise, it really wouldn't be too bad. Uh, we can't seem to get the snow out of here. 22 uh, as you get on the bus. It'll be sunny tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies on the way home and temperatures in the upper 40s. So any little bit of snow shower activity quickly out of here this evening. And that moves on and is out of here. We won't be dealing with it after another hour or two. It should be completely gone and out of the picture and lows again going to fall off into the 20s overnight. A few upper teens snuck in there as well as it is going to remain pretty chilly. Tomorrow we're going to be dealing with sunshine. We're not going to have another frontal system pushed through here, so not going to be dealing with another day of some off and on snow showers like we've had the last couple of days. Still going to be windy though and we're going to be dealing with uh, temperatures that'll be a little warmer tomorrow than what they were today, but uh, going to be tempered and thanks in part to those strong winds. But we could approach 50 uh, in a few areas, maybe even above 50 in a couple of them. Snowfall tonight, very light uh, with any of the snow activity that's coming through tonight. Now, we're looking at a longer range solution of some possible snow. I'll show you a couple of different forecast model outlooks here. This is the European model light snow uh, out onto the plains and into portions of Nebraska with the heaviest snows confined into northern portions of Wyoming. Now the GFS model pushes that moderate snow a little further out onto the plains uh, with the storm system. This is mainly going to be starting Sunday night, but especially Monday and into early Tuesday morning when we're going to be dealing with this accumulating snow. So still several days away, but something we're going to keep an eye on with this snowfall coming in possibly uh, to begin the work week next week. Tonight we're going to be dealing with windy conditions, especially early 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. They'll come down to 10 to 20 and lows down around 21. A snow shower early 51 tomorrow, partly cloudy. It's going to be windy again. Gust 40 plus not going to be hard to reach again tomorrow and probably again on Saturday as well. Another windy day, but Saturday's high. Look at that up to 62. We're forecasting 63 on Groundhog Day uh, for the first part of Sunday. But by the end of Sunday, it's going to be sharply colder. We'll be down into the 20s. We may not get out of the 20s on Monday with some snow showers. Single digits for lows, not out of the question Tuesday night into Wednesday. So right now, our seven day forecast, uh, it's kind of got a little bit of everything in it. Some mild windy conditions early, snow and colder in the middle of it, and uh, back to breezy and seasonal conditions by the end of this seven day forecast. Lots of stuff going on in the middle. We'll keep a very close eye on this storm system as we go through the weekend and uh, see what it brings to our area to start the next work week. Two of the most Arby's sandwiches ever made for six bucks.
They're big, but downing two is possible. You just gotta believe in yourself. I believe in you. Arby's, we have the meat. On April 15, 1924, West Nebraska Methodist Episcopal Hospital, the region's first modern hospital, opened in downtown Scotts Bluff. The goal was to provide the care residents needed close to home, and it's never changed. For 95 years, we've continued to provide exceptional health care for generations of families throughout our region as a community hospital, a regional referral center, and a level 2 trauma center. Thank you for trusting your health care to Regional West Medical Center. At Elite Physical Therapy, we provide preventative and rehabilitative treatments that maximize function and promote well-being for patients of all ages. With two locations in Scotts Bluff and Gearing, we offer the convenience of you choosing your location with the same great services no matter where you go. Stop into one of our locations today in Scotts Bluff at 214 West 27th Street or in Gearing at 10th and M Street and see what Elite Physical Therapy can do for you. Treatment you need and care you deserve. Welcome back. A 41-year-old Scotts Bluff woman has been sentenced to a total of 10 to 13 years in prison after pleading no contest to charges in two meth-related cases. Priscilla Camacho, also known as Priscilla Droppelman, was sentenced yesterday to a prison term of 8 to 10 years with a mandatory minimum of 5 years for her conviction on a charge of possession of methamphetamine between 28 and 139 grams. She was one of five arrested following a wing drug task force bust at a Scotchliffe motel last August. She was also sentenced in a separate case to a consecutive two to three year prison term for a conviction of distribution of an exceptionally hazardous substance. That was in connection to a wing controlled by in October of 2018. Well, the Carpenter Center Board of Directors announced today that they have hired Matt Carpenter as their new director. Carpenter will be be responsible for the overall operations of the center, financial planning and management, recreation and educational programs, and community, community engagement. Carpenter brings 20 years of marketing, finance, and entrepreneurial experience within several industries, along with a strong grasp on business management. Originally from Scotts Bluff, he moved his family back to the area to provide his children with the same opportunities he had growing up. Now, while his name may suggest being a relative of Terry and Hazel Dean Carpenter, it is merely a coincidence. And preliminary numbers show a sharp increase in Wyoming traffic deaths in 2019. The 147 people killed on roads in 2019 was up by 36 compared to 2018 numbers and the most since 2015. The Wyoming Department of Transportation has not yet analyzed its numbers for 2019. The department spokesman Jeff Getz tells the Casper Star Tribune one reason could be more deaths per wreck. He says, generally speaking, most crashes are attributable to driver distraction, alcohol or drug use, and driving too fast for conditions. Wyoming road deaths have largely declined since the early 2000s. Well, straight ahead, Chris Cottrell in with the latest from the Sports Desk. I'll be back with that right after this. Think a utility vehicle should do more than take you places? So does Kubota. That's why our all-new Sidekick is built to do it all. Climb more. Tow more. Go more. Cross over to more today. Take your Kubota Sidekick home with no money down and 0% financing for 36 months. Your local Kubota dealer is Sandberg Implement and Gehring. You said yes. Together, you planned every detail. You married. And then you realized 500 square feet just isn't enough room for two. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. You decide to add another to your family. 
You start reading parenting books. You're amazed that such a small human could need so much space. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. Now, sports from the First National Bank Sports Desk. First National Bank of North Platte. The bank to think of first. Another athlete ready to compete at the collegiate level and another big weekend of basketball here on the network. We dive into sports today with a stop earlier this week over at Gehring High School where a member of the Seacant swimming team was ready to make it official. Gehring senior Haley Rickey will head out of state to go to school and swim at Grinnell College in Iowa. They tell you that when you find your school, you know, and we went to go visit Grinnell. I had talked with the coach beforehand, and after touring the campus and sitting down with Coach Hurley, um, I kind of just had this feeling that Grinnell was where I belonged. Ricky says being a Seacant's been big for her, and her head coach is glad to have gotten to see her progress to this point. Being a Seacat has been really great. Um, Coach John knows that I've really struggled with um, being mentally positive in the pool and keeping that positivity throughout the season. But, um, you know, my four years have been, I'd say they've been pretty great. I went out really strong my freshman, sophomore year. I took a break my junior year and um, I'm back competing and I'm not quite where I was, but I'm getting there, so. We did take, she did take a, a year off and um, We've sat and had many talks uh, on working about the mental game, and she's really come a long ways. Uh, it's fun to see her come back and compete, uh, especially having a year off. Um, I am so excited for her to, to extend her career in swimming, and um, she's going to be a big asset to, to Grinnell. This year for the Sea Cats has been challenging as they are without a home pool to hold meets. They traveled to McCook and won a pair of first places the girls and boys did this past weekend. And Ricky says adopting that road warrior mentality has made everyone a little more mentally tough. One thing we talked about at the beginning of season was we are the team without a home. Um, and we're very thankful that the Y has given us, um, you know, the chance to swim at their pool and have um, the program continue and um, you know no matter where we seem to swim like we do very well um, even if it's not the best pool it's not the right temperature we um, we we still come through and we still perform our best. Ricky says she does the dirty work handling some of the more grueling races on the schedule. I've always been a distance swimmer so I love swimming those long events that everybody hates and I, when I get to college, there's no really telling what I'll swim. I'm hoping I get to swim the same events, maybe throw in a mile here and there. Gearing senior and Seacant competitor Haley Rickey signed earlier this week with Grinnell College in Iowa. She becomes the second Gearing swimmer to earn a college scholarship this year, joining Alana Becker, who signed with Nebraska Omaha. The Seacats in action this weekend. They're a long ways from home again at Omaha West Side on Friday and Saturday. Plenty of high school basketball on tap over the next three nights. Senior night at Gearing tonight as the Bulldogs take on the Baird Tigers. TV and radio tomorrow for Gearing hosting Alliance. Scott's Bluff, they've got games against Rapid City schools on tap. Home tomorrow night for Central and then an early departure on Saturday afternoon with start times at Stevens that day at 2 and 3.30. And the lone games of the weekend for the WNCC Cougars. They'll be at home tomorrow night to take on Otero Junior College. Both teams coming off wins on Tuesday against Trinidad State. The women have won 17 straight now. As for the WNCC men, 3-2 and two, their South Subregion record. Chuck Schwartz will have the games from Cougar Palace tomorrow night on KOZY. That is the latest today from right here at the First National Bank Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Ryan's back with an update with the community calendar right after this on KNEB.TV. Sometimes events in life are planned. Others, a happy surprise. No matter what life change you're navigating, whether you're getting married or just want a bigger yard for your pup, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. 
retirement. A new season in life where you can change how you live it. And something easier, convenient, that feels just right. When it's time, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant, and full-service gas leader. At Compliments for You and Your Home, we're not ready to take down Christmas decor quite yet. Stop in and pick up great Christmas decor at great prices, with all Christmas items 30% off. And remember, Compliments has ladies' fashions that appeal to all ages and sizes. Be sure to look through our clearance racks for last chance bargains. Compliments for you and your home, 1708 Broadway, downtown Scotts Bluff. At Platte Valley Bank, we offer loans with competitive rates and quick decisions from our experienced lenders. Our team works hard to get to know you and your business. From ag to auto, home loans and everything in between, we're here to help. Stop by Platte Valley Bank or apply online to find the loan that is right for you today. And finally tonight, Special Olympics Nebraska is looking for some brave souls to take the plunge next month for the annual Panhandle Polar Plunge. Last year, a total of 93 plungers on a dozen teams raised more than $20,000 by plunging into the icy waters of the North Platte River. This year, organizers are looking for more teams to sign up raise money, and take the leap into the cold waters. Polar plungers are encouraged to get a team together and dress in costumes 
and prizes will be awarded for creativity and hitting certain thresholds on pledge donations. We have a tremendous amount every year of community involvement uh, and we're just looking once again to get the community involved in this. Uh, it's a great project to support Special Olympics uh, and let me tell you our, our local athletes and their families certainly appreciate our sacrifice of dipping our toes into that icy water. <laughs> Last year, Team KNB was one of the top fundraising teams, with Bill Boyer being the top individual fundraiser, raising a whopping $3,600. You can find out more information about this year's plunge by going to KNB.com and looking under the Events tab. This year's Panhandle Polar Plunge will take place on Saturday, February 29th at Riverside Park in Scotts Bluff. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you here next time.